Hi, it's Sophronia Scott. It is Saturday morning, October 13th, 2018, and it's time for your morning walk with me, Sophronia. I am so happy to share with you one of my favorite morning walks. I am here on the banks of the Charles River in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, that's the Weeks footbridge in the background behind me. And I am here at Harvard for my college reunion. I have walked these banks many times and I am so happy to be back here today. So it seems fitting that I'm going to talk to you today about researching your life. So last year, my son Tane, who is now 14, uh, he and I wrote a book together, a memoir, called This Child of Faith, Raising a Spiritual Child in a Secular World. And when we started writing that book, he asked a very good question. Uh, he was 12 at the time, and he knew that he was going to be writing about uh, times when he was six, seven, and eight years old. And he said, Mama, how do I remember that time? There are things that I don't remember, and I was actually even a different person then. And I agreed with him, that's absolutely true. And that's the same for all of us who uh, write memoir. And I explained to him that you can research your life. I told him that he had materials that he had left behind, like clues to what he was like before. Uh, I showed him uh, binders of materials from his Sunday school class that were still on file at our church, things that he had written. Uh, I told him he could interview people like our pastor at the time, Pastor Kathy. And the same goes for all of us. There are ways that you can research your life. Now I talk about this today because even though I'm not actively researching my life here, I am finding pieces of myself because this place is like a home to me. So what have I learned about myself since being here? Uh, I've learned or remembered uh, walking past uh, this restaurant called the Hong Kong, I'm remembering that this is the first place where I ever had Chinese food and how many times I ate egg rolls and dumplings at that restaurant. I am on these walks remembering how when I first came to Harvard, I had no concept of distance in terms of how far it was to walk somewhere because I just loved to be out walking and uh, because you know I grew up in Ohio and we drove everywhere so I would come back to my house Adam's house and I would say oh I you know I was just walking and I went to so-and-so and the person would say to me that's a hike I I'd say oh it is I, I didn't know I, I just went there I was just walking I've also made a discovery an interesting discovery about a time that was way before Harvard uh, I came up on these leaves. Let me see if I can show them to you. Aren't they beautiful, this beautiful red? These leaves might mean nothing to you, but these leaves are the same red. They turn red, of course, in the autumn, but these are the same leaves that were on trees on the playground of my elementary school back in Ohio. And I don't think I've even seen these leaves since. <laughs> And so that brought back all sorts of memories for me. I'm so happy to have these leaves. I have no idea what I'm going to do with any of these memories, but I just talked to you about them because it's an example of how you can discover parts of yourself that you may have forgotten about. I'm actually on my way to the memorial service that we hold for our deceased classmates. It's another way of remembering and thinking about friends. But as I walk, I'm going to um, leave you with this message. I'm, I'm reading at the service. Um, I'm reading a poem by Mary Oliver. I'm going to paraphrase uh, a line from that to end our talk today. Uh, when you research your life, what will you learn about your one wild and precious life? I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to keep walking and go meet up with my classmates. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. I'll see you next time.